Now the first thing you should do for this experiment is actually go and watch another video that I've prepared for you about what an emission spectrum and what an absorption spectrum are. Those are useful concepts for you to have under your belt before you begin this experiment. So if you haven't done so already, stop the video and go watch that other video first. So in this experiment, you're going to be taking measurements with a virtual spectrometer in a simulation. But I wanted to show you what a real spectrometer looks like, just so that you understand what you're working with in the simulation. So this gizmo that kind of looks like the Starship Enterprise is a spectrometer. There's two tubes attached to it here. One of them moves around, and one of them does not. The one that does not is called the collimator, and its main job is that it's got two plates, and it allows a very narrow strip of light to come down the collimator. So for example, if I turn on a light source, then that light comes down the collimator, and as I said, the collimator is only going to allow through a little stripe of light. Then it comes through the diffraction grating in the middle, and we can look at the light through the telescope here. Now this tube here is a gas. So it's a glass tube full of a gas, and we electrically excite it, and that causes the gas to glow. So that's how we get the light. And if I put a different tube of gas in here, we get a completely different color of light because each gas emits its own unique pattern of wavelengths. And so to our eye, every color looks different, but also the spectrum that we're going to see is going to be different for every single gas. So we can use the spectrum, the pattern of lines on the spectrum, as a fingerprint to identify what that gas is. That's what you'll be doing in part B of this experiment. I'll turn this off because it's a little noisy. Now, as I said, the light comes down through the collimator and it goes through a diffraction grating. So the diffraction grating is a piece of glass, in this case, with some very, very fine microscopic lines etched into it side by side. And it disperses the light according to the wavelengths. And you can probably see a bit of rainbow coloring on the light that's reflected off of this. So what happens is I put this here. Because it's glass, a lot of the light's going to go straight through. And when I put my telescope lined up with the collimator and look through it, I'll see a bright stripe of light that's the same color as the light source. So that's called the central image, and it goes straight through. But the diffraction grating also spreads out some of the light sideways. And it spreads it out according to wavelength, which means all the colors get separated, and we can now see the spectrum. So if I move the telescope off to the side, I will see the spectrum for that gas. I can also go to the other side of the central image and see the same spectrum over here. So it disperses it sideways, and I can look at the spectrum over here or over here. To take data, what you do first is you would find the central image, and in the telescope there are some crosshairs. And you would put the crosshairs on that bright stripe of light, and then you can take a reading of the angle here. So right here there's a little arrow, and it points to this scale here, which is in degrees, and you would measure off the angle that the central image is at. Then you'd move this to the side, you'd go find some spectral lines, and again, you put the crosshairs on the spectral line, and you would take a reading. Go to the next spectral line, put the crosshairs on it, take a reading. The angle that you're interested in, the one that's going to allow you to calculate the wavelengths, is always the angle of the spectral line compared to the angle of the central image. So we basically use the central image as zero, and we measure this angle relative to it, or we can equivalently go to the other side and measure this angle over here. And using the angle that the spectral line appeared at and the number of lines per millimeter that our diffraction grating has, we can then calculate what the wavelength of the light is. And again, by calculating all the wavelengths emitted by that light source, we can figure out what gas is inside the tube. So that's a real spectrometer. Now let me show you the simulation. So here's the simulator. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, the blue side, we've got a virtual spectrometer. Over here on the extreme left, we've got a light source. Right now it's set to be white light. Then we've got the collimator. In the middle, we've got our diffraction grating. And then over here, we've got a telescope with an eyeball looking through it. And you can click and drag this so you can move this back and forth. Now the view down here shows you what the eyeball would be seeing through the telescope. And right now, because we're looking at a white light source, we're just seeing that vertical strip of white light that came through the collimator. But if I move the telescope down to the side, then we see the spectrum for the white light. And because this is white light, we see the full spectrum, a full rainbow. I can also go to the other side of the central image, and I'll see the same spectrum over there. So these two spectrums are just mirror images of one another. 
Over on the right hand side of the screen, this white area here, you can look up facts about various gases. So for example, you can look at the wavelengths and the intensity chart for a different gas. This will come in useful to you in part B when you're trying to identify a mystery gas. So where are the mystery gases? Well, over here in the extreme upper left-hand corner, there's a drop-down menu and you can change from white light to a mystery gas. So this is mystery gas number one, it looks red. And if I swing the telescope over, I can look at its spectral lines. And so it's got quite a different spectrum than the white light source did. So this is a line spectrum rather than a continuous spectrum. And again, it's the same over here, just flipped. I can also look at any of the other mystery light sources here, and again, go and check out their spectrums. So that one's got fewer lines than the first one did. So we're able to look at the spectrum for a variety of these gases, and we can actually look at two spectrums. So the second drop-down menu up here is currently set to show you an emission spectrum. If you click on that, you can also change it to what's called an absorption spectrum. So I'll do that. And over here on the left, you'll notice that the light source has been replaced by a white light source, just a light bulb. But in front of it, there's a filter made out of that gas. So the filter made out of the gas is absorbing certain wavelengths out of the white light spectrum. And so when we swing this back and forth, we see the full rainbow, but now there's dark lines on it. And maybe that'll be easier to see with gas number two. So let's go have a look at that. So again, full rainbow, but there's a few dark lines in it now. And you can compare the absorption spectrum to the emission spectrum very easily just by switching back and forth between the two. So absorption spectrum, emission spectrum. And in part A of the experiment, you're going to look at all of the gases. You're going to compare their emission spectrums to their absorption spectrums. And after you've looked at all of them, then you're going to answer just one question in your book. And that is, does a gas emit the same wavelengths that it absorbs? So based on what you've seen in the simulation and on that video you watched earlier, you should be able to answer that question. So the objective in part B is that you want to identify what one of these mystery gases really is. So the spectrums that we've got here are actually real spectrums for real gases. And so you're going to try and figure out what gas your mystery gas actually is. So you can pick any of these, whichever one you like. And first thing you want to do is write down what the number is. So I would write down mystery gas 4. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to record an image of this spectrum. So scroll past it. Make sure you've looked at all the lines, and then you want to record this in your notebook. So if you've got pencil crayons, go ahead and draw it in color. That's probably the easiest way. You could also use a computer drawing program or take screen captures and stitch them together to create a digital image and send that to your lab instructor. But you do want to record what that spectrum actually looked like, either as a drawing or as an image. So after you've done that, then you're down to the data taking. So the way in which you're going to take data is you want to scroll over and you want to put the crosshairs in this telescope view right on top of a spectral line. And when they're right on top of a spectral line, then you can read the angle that that spectral line is located at right here. And you'll record that in your notebook. Then you would move on to the next spectral line and put the crosshairs right on it. And again, write down the angle. You want to record the angles of up to five of the brightest lines in your spectrum. So some of the gases have lots of lines, some of them don't have very many, but you're going to record up to five of the brightest lines. You put the crosshairs right on the line and write down the angle. When you're done recording the angles of your five spectral lines, then you want to move across to the other side of the central image. And by the way, the central image at zero degrees is not part of your spectrum, so don't take any measurements on it. You move over to the other side of the central image and you take angle measurements on all of these spectral lines again. So find the same spectral lines on this side, and again, put the crosshairs right on them, take down the angle, put the crosshairs on the next one, take down its angle as well. So you measure the same spectral lines on both sides of the central image. Then you're going to take the average of the two angles and the number of lines per millimeter that our diffraction grading here has, and you're going to use that to calculate the wavelengths of all of those spectral lines that you studied. And once you've got the wavelengths, then you're going to identify your gas. So that's what this little miniature encyclopedia over here on the right hand side is for, is you can look up facts about all of the different gases, and your mystery gas is one of these, but you don't know which yet. You have to figure that out. So you look at the different gases and you check whether these spectral line intensities look roughly like what you saw when you looked at your spectral lines, 
and you'll also check whether your wavelengths basically match the wavelengths for that gas. So you do a bit of research here and you figure out what gas you are looking at and you identify that in your lab notebook. Now in part C, I want you to study some spectras at home. And of course, the big problem with that is that you don't have a diffraction grating at home. Or do you? So you've probably noticed before that when you look at the backs of CDs or DVDs, that they shine these little rainbows all over the place. Those are spectrums. What's going on is that the data pits on your CD are close enough together that this acts as a diffraction grating with curved lines instead of straight lines. So we're going to use this to look at the spectra of four household light sources. So I'm going to let you choose what light sources you use based on what you've got in your house, but I do have some suggestions that I'll tell you about in a moment. First, however, let me show you how you look at a spectrum with a DVD or a CD. So what you want to do is you want to tilt this until you can see the light source right at the edge of the CD. So I've got the light source right at the edge of my CD, and then I tilt away from it slightly, and coming up from the center, there's a spectra, and it's a little washed out here in the video, but that is a full rainbow of colors. Now that's called the first order spectra. If I keep tilting away from the light source, I'm gonna see a second order spectra. So this one is dimmer than the first and more stretched out, and you can see the colors a little better in the video. So that is the second order spectrum, and if I keep going, I'll see a third order spectrum, and again, it's dimmer and it's more stretched out. So generally speaking, you're going to want to look at just the first order spectrum because it's bright enough. But like I said, here in the video, unfortunately, it looks a little washed out. So that's the spectrum of my light source, and it's a pretty typical looking spectrum in that it's the full rainbow. So I see the blue end of the spectrum, and it progresses through yellow and then onto orange and pink. So that's what you expect to see for a white light source. So that is one of the light sources I'd like you to look at at home, is a white light source. So that would be like an incandescent bulb or a candle flame or even the moon if you can get a spectrum off of it. So look at one white light source in your home. Now the second one that I'd like you to take a look at is the spectrum of a fluorescent tube. So either a fluorescent tube or a compact fluorescent bulb. And here's the reason why. So this will be a little bit strange to look at. This is a still photograph. You're looking at the edge of a CD right along here. And then reflected in the CD, you see a light source. So this light source is a compact fluorescent tube that I've got up at the top of my laundry closet. And down below it, you see the spectrum. But you notice something interesting about this right away. We don't have a full rainbow. We've got four separate images of the bulb in different colors. So there's a dark blue one here, a teal one here, a green one here, and a red one here. So four images of the bulb. And the reason why is that fluorescent tubes don't have a continuous spectrum. They have a line spectrum. They only produce four colors of light. And so we see four images of the bulb in those colors. So that's why I want you to look at a fluorescent tube if you've got one in your house. It's one of your opportunities to see a line spectrum in your own home. Here's another example of a compact fluorescent tube's light spectrum. So this is a desk lamp, and that means that the light bulb was much closer to the CD, and it couldn't fit all four of the images on the CD at the same time, but you can clearly see the red and the green images, and you can see the curly shape of the light bulb. So this is just more evidence to you that yes, you will see four separate images of the bulb in different colors because fluorescent tubes produce a line spectrum. The third type of spectrum I'd like you to study at home if you can is a colored LED for example, a red or a green LED that you might see on a stereo. Here's what that looks like. So here's a green LED, and you can see its reflection at the edge of the CD here. And then over here, we see its spectrum. And as you can see, colored LEDs only put out a very limited number of wavelengths. So it's basically just green and maybe a tiny little hint of yellow and orange. Same thing with this red LED. So here's the LED. Here's its reflection, and over here is its spectrum. And again, the spectrum basically just looks red with maybe a tiny little hint of orange on one side. So a very limited spectrum. So again, in part C, I want you to study four spectra in your home using a CD or a DVD. In each case, you should draw the spectrum with pencil crayons, or you can photograph it and include that in your notebook. And you should also describe in words the defining characteristics of each of those spectra. So is it a continuous spectrum? Is it a line spectrum? Does it have a limited number of wavelengths? Is it the full rainbow of wavelengths? 
and if possible, try to study at least one white light source, one fluorescent tube, and one colored LED. So ideally, those will be three of your four, and you can choose whatever you like for the fourth one. See if you can find something interesting, like a lava lamp or a light seen through colored glass. Don't use sunlight, as it is bright enough to damage your eyes. And if you do have access to a tanning lamp, make sure you use the safety goggles. But try and find something weird to look at for your fourth spectrum.